Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. I want to thank you for the continued feedback and the likes. As always, I've got some great launches for you today, but I've got some really big news at the end, so watch the launches and stay tuned. First up, a really big set of updates to AWS Outposts. This is a really, really cool service. It lets you run your AWS infrastructure and services on premises. You get a really consistent hybrid experience. It's fully managed, and as my colleague James Hamilton likes to say, it just works. One thing I love about this, all of your AWS knowledge, your training, your code, your operational practices, they all still apply. You can get Outpost as a 42U rack, and you can use up to 96 racks together to create a gigantic pool of compute and storage capacity. We're also working on the smaller side with some smaller form factors that should be coming out later this year. So there's just a lot of Outpost news this week. The first thing, we're adding two larger S3 storage tiers. The first one is 240 terabytes. The second one is 380 terabytes. These two new tiers join the existing range that goes from 26 terabytes up to 96 terabytes. What I love about this, regardless of which one you choose, you get the S3 API support and a wide range of S3 features. Another cool thing, we now support S3 endpoints on your on-premises network. This allows your existing applications to get this storage via IP addresses that you own and allocate. Another awesome thing for Outposts, we now support EC2 placement groups. This gives you fine-grained control of workload positioning. You have a choice of two different strategies, spread and partition. We're also making Outposts available in even more locations. The three newest ones, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. To learn a lot more about this, you can read all the What's New items I've linked for you. Next cool thing, a really interesting addition to EBS volume creation. Now, this one's a bit esoteric, but I think it's going to be really useful to you if you have some kind of automated setup process that creates EBS volumes as part of a bigger workflow. It's also great if you're using containers and container orchestration. The feature is called idempotent volume creation. In plain English, what this means is that if you want to create a given volume, you want to make sure that if you have some kind of a retry at a higher level, you'll accidentally create multiple volumes for the same purpose. So to do this, you simply supply a unique token when you call the create volume API. If a volume with that unique token already exists, the call succeeds, but it doesn't actually create another volume. If the volume doesn't exist, it creates it and the call succeeds. It's gonna help your automation to work better if there's a retry at a higher level, kind of around the scope that calls create volume. To learn more about this, you can read the what's new. And finally, a great addition to EC2 auto scaling. So if you've been following AWS for any length of time, you know that auto-scaling is really fundamental to dealing with varying traffic or work levels. I went back and checked, and it's actually one of the earliest parts of AWS, going all the way back to early 2009. Well, since then, we've added a ton of options and a ton of features. The newest one I think is really, really cool. It gives you very, very detailed control over the instances that get to be terminated during a scale-in operation. All right, first we should define scale in and scale out. You got your EC2 instances, you got your auto scaling group, you've got it all set up, a bunch of traffic comes in. So that operation, as you add more instances to deal with that additional traffic, that extra load, that's called a scale out. So scale out, you launch a bunch of new instances to help handle that traffic. Traffic is there for a while, and then at some point it probably subsides. So you wanna get rid of some instances and you, that operation where you where you are auto scaling kill some instances, that's called a scale-in. Well, up to now, EC2 auto-scaling made its own educated decision about which instances to scale in and, and to terminate, but now we're giving you that level of control. And it happens actually in a really, really cool way. What you do is you create a Lambda function, and the Lambda function gets to make the decision. As input, it gets a list of instances that are eligible for termination, and then it then returns a list of those that are safe to actually terminate. So your you get to put any kind of code you'd like in that function. And so you can do some application specific checking. Perhaps some of the, uh, the instances are still at hard work on a long running request, or you need them for some other reasons, or maybe you wanna get a little bit creative and you wanna shut down or keep particular instances based on some particular attribute. Maybe the instance type, or maybe some tags, or maybe you've got some kind of personal favorite instances you want to keep around, or whatever you want to do, 
this function allows you to, to do that. It, it's there and it awaits your creativity. So to learn more about this, you can read the what's new as always. And finally, let's wrap up with the big news that I promised. I've been doing the what's new show for several years now in several different ways. In the early days, we had a really big crew. We filmed in the AWS studio, and that was really great. Wonderful to have all the, all the professionals right there helping out to make me look good. We started working from home and we discontinued the show for a bit, started to get a lot of requests to, to bring it back to life. Worked with my colleagues on the AWS video team to get the right equipment and get the right setup, and I've been recording from home ever since then. Now, we've always been experimenting. We're always trying some new things. We had a great time putting together all the the stories that I shared with you earlier this year. And our next big step, we're going to actually go live and we're going to join forces with the AWS On Air show on Twitch. Going forward, I'm going to have a weekly segment that you can join us on Fridays. You can see me live. This is going to mean you're going to get the latest news even faster. One thing I love about Twitch is there's a live audience there. So I would love it if you join that Twitch stream, you can say hello, you can ask some questions. If that's not convenient for you to, to dial in, connect up, whatever, whatever dial in means these days, for you to connect up and, and get online, we're going to take out the What's New segment. We're going to polish it up a bit, and we're going to publish that for offline consumption as well. I really enjoy live streaming, so I'm going to actually be co-hosting the AWS On Air every couple of weeks. Would, would love to see you there, so be, be sure to, to tune in. As we make this great transition, I want to really thank everyone behind the scenes. That's really helped me to go from not having a clue to maybe having a half a clue about how to do a, a good job of this. Lots of folks helped out, but I want to call particular attention to Kelrick, who's our video program manager, Corey and Pacha, who've helped out with video production, and then John, who's be, been my video and my acting coach. Other great news, I've, I've been kind of working from this improvised home office for a while. I really want to do an awesome job at video going forward. So I'm, I'm actually designing and building a, a brand new in-home studio. Can't wait to show you what, what that's all about. And that's all I got to share for this week. But thanks for the great feedback. Thank you so much for watching. Keep the feedback coming. Tune in live and we'll see you again soon.